Hey, I'm going to be showing you guys how to do a valve adjustment on a Yamaha XV250. This will cover V-Star 250, Virago 250, and Route 66 motorcycles made from about 1988 until, well, it's 2022 right now and they're still in showroom floors. So this will handle just about everything. There's some slight differences, but uh, it's a pretty simple job and this should handle all years. You should be able to figure this out. Uh, so here we are. Uh, it's a pretty simple job. I'm doing this here in my apartment parking lot, which is less than ideal, but uh, it can be done. I'm going to take this camera off the tripod and show you some tools that I've got laid out that you will need to do this. Uh, just to start off, we're going to need your standard sort of quarter inch with all your sizes, you know, 8, 10, 12, 14. Basically, if you've worked on this bike before, you know what sizes the bolts typically are. You will need an 8 millimeter wrench for adjusting the tappets. For the crankshaft, to move the crankshaft around, you'll need an extension with a 17. This will work for me. Uh, some pliers, good for hose clamps and also holding the tappets in place. Uh, this is what I'm going to use because I don't have a special tappet tool. If you've got one of those, uh, you'll need one made for an 8mm uh, lock nut. Uh, I got a brush, so we're going to brush some dirt off of the tappet covers, uh, valve covers, before we open them up so nothing falls on the motor. And just some good uh, screwdrivers, number two Phillips, and just a cheapy flathead. Um, here I've got a printout from a great website for working on this bike, virago250street.com. Printed this out, and it's going to give us a good overview of our uh, valve adjustments, what the icons mean for the crankshaft, and uh, the, what we need to set the valves to. Uh, the valve covers are a 24 millimeter uh, cap and uh, what I've got here is some washers that I've sized up from the hardware store to take the caps off of your crank cover or your stator cover. Um, these here are stainless washers, the thinner ones I could find at the hardware store. None of the standard uh, steel washers were thin enough. Um, there's some measurements, I'll try to throw them up on the screen, that I found online for what size uh, washers will work for this, but uh, we're going to go ahead and get started here. Alright, good first step is uh, just to take your seat off, and that'll let us get the bolt off the back of the tank. And we're just going to lift the tank up a good couple inches. You can take the tank off, but it, it just creates more work. So, for the seat here, I'm going to get an extension on a quarter inch ratchet for the 10 millimeter. I'm going to take out the bolt right here, and another one on the other side. The seat is now off. We've got one 10 mil. Sorry, that's a 12. Let's get our tank up. And you don't need a lot of clearance on this to get to your, your valves on this side. You just need to lift the tank up with like this. I'm going to put a flathead screwdriver handle under the tank just to get clearance. Um, if you want to, you can definitely remove the tank, just a little more work than is necessary, so I'm going to skip that. Next step, uh, I'm going to pull my spark plug wires off of each side, and then we're going to remove some uh, nuts that are keeping our head covers on. I'll show you that up close. We're over here on the other side of the bike. Uh, in order to get these head covers off, we need to remove our air box. Uh, there's two screws, one here, one here. They're a five millimeter hex. Keep track of these bolts on the other side. Once these two are off, the air box connects to the frame. The frame is actually part of the air box. There's an enclosure in there. Once these two screws are out, there's a hose clamp. There's a cylinder behind this of rubber that's clamping to a flange on the frame. If you feel in here, you can put your finger on that, um, that Phillips head screw for, for the hose clamp. We'll see if I can get a better look in there for you guys. So I'm going to get in here, turn towards the other way of the camera if I can. You can take this air box all the way apart or just uh, get it off the frame. So once that's loose, it might be a bit tight. That hose clamp is loose, but it's still um, 
doesn't want to go, what I'm going to do is just take my flathead and just gently pry it off. So I needed my flathead, so I took it out of the uh, tank. There we go. So that's off. Then we've got um, we've got a couple of hoses here. This clamp is so worn out that uh, I could just pinch it off. So we're gonna rotate this to break the seal. And there's another hose in the back here. That on my bike it doesn't have a clamp on it, so we're gonna do that. And uh, that's our air box removed. While you're here, it's a great idea to check out your air filter. Uh, I installed a K&N filter on this bike about a year ago, and I did notice after checking it, it had fallen off just because of how, um, how it's attached in there. To get this air box open, you see we've got all these different screws. The only ones you need to worry about is this one here and this one here. These are a number three Phillips, not a number two, so you might go stripping these out if you try using a number two on them. So we're going to get these loose and uh, just make sure everything looks right in here. Alright, so screws fell out. Keep track of those. And uh, here at the air box. Everything looks fine. Screws loosely in place so I'll tighten that down. I might get some Loctite on this but our filter looks clean enough to reuse and we'll just set this aside for now. Alright here we will remove the left side pod. Uh, in this pod is basically I believe it's an exhaust gas recirculation system something like that. Um, in the older bikes I think this pod is mostly empty so it's much easier to delete or remove but uh, the way you start is just by removing these two number head number two Phillips screws at the bottom. It does also do crankcase ventilation, I believe. This setup in here. So these two are removed. Now we see how we've got a number three Phillips head holding this. Um, sort of filter box in place. Knock that out. so loose they're not really that worn out um, and there's also a pipe right here that's going to pull off of that and then we're just going to go into this whole filter box off of this valve gently and keep that nearby the screw so we don't lose anything just make sure we still got everything in frame here all right so zooming in on this we've got a bolt here and a corresponding one on the bottom, there are 10 millimeter. Now we'll take this whole assembly out. We've got this here, which is connected to your air intake system. This, uh, this hose clamp might be a bit, this hose rather might be a bit tight, so a good trick is to grab needle nose pliers and just give that a, a light uh, clamp and then twist it. And kind of hear it snap loose and it should pull off easy. So make sure you don't use this hose clamp. I'll set that aside. Uh, since this whole thing is loose, we're going to remove it as well and set it on the ground next to the rest of the EVR system. Uh, so looking at this, we can get this whole box out of the way with these two 10 millimeters, and then uh, that should be all we need to do. If you want to take the bracket off, there's the two, two 10 mils uh, behind this pod, and that'll let you uh, delete most of it. Uh, after that, this whole system should be able to just swing and hang by these hoses. These hoses are pretty, uh, pretty strong, so. I have no, no reason to disconnect them and uh, mess anything up, so we're just going to 
get a 10 millimeter on this ratchet. That's a 12. There's a 12. Crack these off. The last time I checked these valves, I did remove this whole box. It's really more trouble than it's worth, so we're just going to let it hang down like this. And now we'll have plenty of clearance. I'll go ahead and take this hose and set it next to the valve box that it went to. And uh, now we have a lot more access to our front cylinder head. So we now have our head covers off of the motor. What we need to turn our attention to now is our stator cover. So these uh, these two slots here, I wouldn't go jamming screwdrivers in them because you'll just mar them up. They're actually a uh, sort of a cylindrical cut in there. So the washers that I have, uh, I'll try to find some measurements and put them in the description. The mine fit in so tight that I can usually take them off by hand. This one here is metal, and this one here is plastic. If you have any trouble, give the, give the washer kind of a tap with a hammer. Uh, and then this one I can't take off by hand since it's metal, so I'll take my vice grip. Vice grips here, and you might be able to do this with one of those pliers. Get these clamps down a bit better. Make sure I'm in shot. Use this looking wrench. And that one was a bit tight, but it did move for us. And so this will give us a good look at our crankshaft. You see it did bend the washer a bit, but uh, it did come loose. Uh, behind these two caps are two O-rings. Make sure you don't lose those. You see this O-ring stayed with the cover. So I'm going to take this O-ring and set it with the cap so I don't lose it. This one off. And there should be another old one as well. This one is in the cap around this ring. So I'm going to bring the camera down and we're going to take a look at this crankshaft here. We're ready to start moving this crankshaft around. There's a 17 millimeter bolt here. So we're going to get our 17 socket and extension on that. What's important to note is that this motor from this perspective rotates counterclockwise. You'll want to rotate it counterclockwise and we're going to bring these uh, cylinders to top dead center one at a time. Uh, what I have here on this paper that I will link to is your uh, indication of whether you're at the front or rear uh, cylinder top dead center. So I'm going to do the front first because that's the easiest to get to. We'll save the best for last. I'm going to put a socket on this and start rotating it over. The marks will look like that. And there will be a uh, triangle molded into the cover. That should point at those two marks for the front cylinders. Now we're going to, going to start taking off these caps. On the cover, they're 24 millimeter, but before I do so, they're a little dirty. So I've got a nylon brush. I'm just going to make sure the area is clean and nothing will be falling into the engine while these caps are on. I'm going to grab a paper towel and I'll just go around that and spit that oil off. with an air compressor and all the brake cleaner in the world, you could douse this whole thing down and blow it off and make it look picture perfect. But I don't have such conditions. 
So this will have to do. Uh, I've got a big long 24 millimeter. This is completely unnecessary. These should not be that tight. Uh, Counterclockwise, just like a regular nut. And we'll go ahead and crack this one off. So that one went off easy. And I'll do the same back here. And for now, we'll just uh, take both of them off now as well. So these two caps have O rings behind them. Make sure you don't lose them, of course. Should be easy to take off that one now. And we'll get a look at those tappets. Sit that cap face down or a face well inside of the engine face down on this towel here so that nothing falls in it from these trees and uh, once this cap is off i'm going to make sure that my front cylinder is on top dead center uh, meaning at top dead center most of these valves should be closed so the tappets shouldn't have any pressure on them you should be able to take them with your finger and rock them back and forth there should be a little wiggle in there, indicating that there's no pressure on your on your uh, valve. So we are at top dead center, the mark lines up, and there's no pressure on those. So uh, I'm going to take a look at this exhaust valve with you, and uh, we're going to check the clearances. So here I want to mention a little mistake I've made. Uh, it's important that you adjust the valves at top dead center on compression stroke. I realized my mistake here on the back cylinder, what I did was I had adjusted them on exhaust stroke. Uh, what you need to do is take off your cam gear cover. There's two number three Phillips head screws. Uh, just loosen those. You can see I'm pointing them out here. And then the cover should pull off. There's an O-ring that seals it and that's all that should hold it in place. It's fairly easy to pry it off just with your fingers. Uh, just don't lose that o-ring and you can see here on the cam gear there's a timing mark on the bottom that being on the bottom means we're on exhaust stroke it needs to be lined up with that triangle on the top that would indicate an uh, a compression stroke top dead center situation so what i'm going to do here is just rotate that crankshaft uh, 360 degrees and uh and that will bring us back up to top dead center on the compression stroke, which is the proper way to adjust the valves. So uh, on the left side of the bike, which is the side you're about to see me adjust, just take off the cover on the left side and uh, do the same thing you see here. Make sure that line uh, comes right up to that triangle and you'll know you're in the right spot. Okay, so we've got both caps off of this front cylinder head. Our timing mark is lined up. And then one more thing you need to make sure of is that your cam timing mark, that line and that triangle are lined up. All right, here I've got a better look at the exhaust valve. Uh, I went ahead and read the clearances off on this sheet and what we need to have on exhaust side is about uh, 0.12 millimeters. Uh, on my cheapy uh, set here, you can see I've got, well you can't see, you'll have to trust me, 0.1 and 0.13 millimeters. I've got two sets of feeler gauges, I've got a cheap set so that I can bend them and get them into these clearances, uh, and then I've got an expensive set that I try not to bend uh, for adjusting valves on cars. This is a engine designed in the 80s, so the clearances are very forgiving. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with my 0.13. I don't have a 0.12 in this set, but uh, this should do. We'll just make sure it's a little tight. Uh, I'm going to sneak my gauge in here underneath the frame and hold up on my tap it. And I've got a slight drag on this here. So that feels about right. I don't think I'll mess with it. I might tighten it up a little bit since we are at 0.13. That's probably still within the uh, reasonable reasonable limit. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put my 0.1 gauge in here and just see how much resistance I have. Probably none. There's a slight, there is, there is a drag, but it's not very much. So, um, 
my intuition says we are fine on this tappet. I'm going to check my gauge set and see what else I've, I have here. I've got a 0.15 as my next step on my gauge set. You might be able to read that. So this is my 0.13, this is my 0.15. I'm going to see if the valve has enough clearance for 0.15 to go in. Which would indicate to me that they are too... Yep, I've got way too much space on this valve. There's a slight drag at 0.15, so what we're going to have to do is take our 8mm and slide it onto this, tap it, crack it loose, rotate the post down with our fingers, just pinching it and rotating, get it kind of snug. Or not snug, shouldn't be snug, but it's coming up on that jam nut. So then we'll just get this wrench on here, pinch it with the vice grips, and cinch it down a little. And we'll get it tighter once um, once we've got a good clearance. And we'll check this. I want, uh, I want a pretty smooth clearance at 0.13. They can be a bit... Um, bit over spec. Under spec's getting a bit dangerous. You can start burning valves if they get too under spec because the valve won't close all the way. So let's see. Yeah, I've got a good good amount of drag at 0.13. Let me try 0.15. There should not be clearance for 0.15. Yep. Really gotta try to jam that in there so we're good on that. And then 0.10 should have plenty of clearance. Should slide in easy. Yep, plenty of clearance in there, so I'd say this is good. I'm gonna take my vice grips, get my wrench in place, pinch the post, tighten it down pretty snug, and then uh, just recheck everything just as I did before. Got my 1.3. I've got a good snug drag on that. 0.15. Should have no clearance. Yep, very tight. And then uh, I'll just trust that there. So we're good with this exhaust valve on this cylinder. Uh, we're going to go ahead and get our cap in place and tighten it down. Now that's one done. Three to go. I'm not going to show you past this, uh, I'll do this next intake cylinder on the other side of this head uh, in terms of getting that adjustment in the spec, but I won't show you on the other side past just getting the caps off and how to get a wrench in there, because uh, that'll get a bit tedious. Alright, so we got our cap snug. Don't go wrenching on this, it is aluminum, so just get it kind of snug. And then uh, I'll readjust our camera for the intake side on the other side of the bike. I'm here on the right side of the bike. I'll give you a view of where I'm at. Uh, so here you can see the gas tank, there's two 8mm bolts that hold in your fuel pump. I went ahead and removed those. There's a hose here that goes into this barb. Uh, I removed the hose clamp, pulled the hose off. This is the gas feed to your carb, so there will be a little bit of gasoline in there. I removed the hose clamp entirely and set it aside so it does not fall on the engine. And then I removed this wire to a carburetor heater. And now we've got plenty of clearance. All right, I've got a good view of this tappet. I'm gonna go ahead and get this hose out of the way. I'm tucking it up where the coil pack is. And that should clamp it in, it shouldn't be in our way. I've got my feeler gauges out. I've got a set of 0 0.1, 0 0.08, and 0 0.13. 0 0.1 is the measurement that we're going for. I'm gonna go ahead and slide this in here. And I've got a loose fit. It's dragging a little too easy for my liking. So I'm going to take my 8mm and just loosen this jam nut. Crack it loose. Now that, that point 0.1 
gauge was just barely loose, so I'm going to turn it just a little bit. And with my thumb on the post, I'm going to rotate this nut. And just get it kind of close. And I'll take my wrench, set it on the jam nut. I'm going to pinch the post with my vice grips. And I've got a good drag on point one. Pulling out my point one three. And I've got no clearance for a point one three. So this valve is good to go. I'm going to recheck that cap, make sure it's perfectly tight. We're going to jam that, and then we're going to put the cap back on, and we'll be all set. Here I've adjusted so that we can look at the intake valve on cylinder number two, the back cylinder. Uh, so we need to get into here. But what's stopping us is all these hoses. So this goes to our intake manifold, uh, our intake boot, and I've got a zip tie on there, so I don't really feel like redoing that. Uh, this shouldn't be in our way as much as this is. This is another hose that goes to our fuel pump down here. I'm just going to pinch that clamp off. Let me angle the camera down so that you can see what I'm doing. So again, we're getting this hose out of our way. There's a T-joint at the top here, and it comes down to this hose. So we're not going to take it off this T-joint because that's pretty fragile. I'm going to take it off of our pump. So just like the other hose, I'm going to take it, pinch it with my pliers, and twist it. And then that should break the seal on it and allow it to pull off. This here is your vacuum feed. So the pulses of vacuum from the engine's intake cycle uh, are feeding a diaphragm, uh, a pulse, so that it can pump uh, fuel up to your carburetor. So I'm just going to take this hose tuck it up here on my throttle cable and now angling up see here's the hose I've just kind of tucked it over here by a throttle cable now I've got plenty of room for this cylinder um, now I'm going to take the camera over to the side and we're going to ensure that this cylinder is at top dead center Alright, so here's our cap we're going to take off. I've got my 24 millimeter. Now it's a pretty shallow hex here, so make sure it's perfectly seated. And uh, this one's a bit tight, so I'll bump it off. While I'm here with the wrench in my hand, I'm coming around the back. And I'm going to get the exhaust side off. This one's pretty tight. So they're both loose. I'm going to go ahead and take uh, take my brush to make sure this is clean. And I brushed it before and cleaned it with a paper towel before, so this one's clean. No dirt should be falling on the motor. I'm going to take, uh, take this cap off. Make sure that the O-ring stayed with the cap. And I'm going to set it uh, inside down on a towel. Take my gauge. I'm going to slip it in there. Lifting up, slip the gauge in. And now, I've got a decent amount of drag. I'm going to tighten the post down with my fingers as tight as I can get it. Now I've got a really good drag. I like that. I like that right there. Now we're going back with the wrench and the pliers. Got it good and snug. So now that I've got a good 
tightness on that jam nut, and I like it. Still play. 0.1 feeler gauge. It slips in. It slips in nice with a little bit of drag. I've got a 0.13. We're going to see how that fits in there. It doesn't fit in at all. 0.08. This should be a loose fit. Very loose fit. So we're all good to go on this cylinder. Here I am at the rear cylinder. I've gone ahead and loosened it up and ensured that there's play in that tappet. Um, I've removed the exhaust pipe with the two 12 bolts behind this hose. And uh, in order to get my gauge in here, I have to have the handle of the gauge set sort of here and then a right angle at my 0.13 gauge. Again, the clearance we're going for is 0.12. That's dead in the middle of the acceptable range. So 0.13 is good enough. Uh, I'm going to tighten this down by hand now that I've got it slipped in the valve, and we'll go from there. So, I'll try to stay out of the way of the camera, but this is a really tight situation. I'm just going to twist this down with my fingers as much as I can until it hits that gauge. And since this is a 0.13 and we're aiming for 0.12, a tight, you know, tightening it down onto that gauge by hand is fine. Got a little too tight, so I put some loose under there. And I've got a, a, a nice snug slip with 0.13. Let's flip this around. Yep, alright, you got a good view of that. So I can move 0.13 in and out. It is somewhat tight, but that's about as good as I can hope for this cylinder. And now for the tricky part with our vice grips and uh, bridge. Alright, so I've got that. I've got the vice grips clamped down on it pretty tight. And then I'm going to slip the open end of my wrench in. Since I don't have a wrench on it. Okay, so you can see my vice grips are right on that tap it. Now I'm taking the open end of my wrench and I snug up that nut. I snug it up with my hand. Alright, so I've got it twisted down with my finger. Now I need to get it snug with a wrench. This is so little room to work here. Uh, let me go ahead and zoom out so you can kind of see where we are. There's not much room here. I'll do the closed end of my wrench over this top it. And then with the vice grips, hold the post in place. All right, we've got it good and tight on that rear exhaust. So we have all of our valves adjusted at this point. Um, what I'm going to do, just gonna make sure they've got a good rock in them. That's the intake, exhaust, good rock in it, nothing's tight. I'm gonna rotate the cylinders around uh, twice just to make sure all the valves are moving properly and I've got no contact with anything. Alright, so now it's time to button everything back up. I've made double sure that all of my adjustments are correct. We've got 
uh, at top dead center on compression stroke on both cylinders. All our clearances are right. Double, triple check everything before you put this bent together because you don't want to be redoing it. Uh, first step, we're going to put our timing covers back on each side and then we'll t redo the valve caps. A 24 millimeter wrench on that. Just get those snug. No reason to uh, go wrenching on them too much. And then uh, I'll see you in the next step. All right, so I've got all my caps back on and my covers back on each side, my timing covers for the cams. Now I'm going to undo basically all the hoses I got out of the way here, starting off our vacuum pulse for the, uh, let's make sure you can see what's going on, vacuum pulse for your uh, fuel pump. There's a barb here. This hose is going to the T on your, your intake. Slide that on there. Hose clamp in place. I'm going to take this. This is my fuel regulator. Remember, I took this uh, this hose clamp out of the way so it didn't fall anywhere. I'm going to go ahead and slide that on here. Slide the hose on. Get the clamp in place. Now we're all set. I took this wire out of the way for the carb heater. Plug that back in. Click into place. I'll take these bolts out and get my fuel pump back in place. I want to make sure that you get your exhaust set back in. So I'm just going to go in as far as I can go and I'm going to swing this in around this hose to adjust it a little bit and squeeze the hose around it. Alright, we're going to jiggle that into place and get our two 12 millimeter bolts back in. Over here on the other side, I'm going to put my timing caps back on the crankshaft cover. Um, so I've got both of my caps here with their O-rings still in place and the two uh, washers. So just get these snug, there's no reason to uh, really wrench on them too much. So I've got my covers here in place. Now we're going to do our engine uh, engine covers, these things. We've got uh, eight 8 millimeter screws. Uh, installation is the reverse of disassembly, so we'll just slide these on, tighten those nuts down, uh, or uh, screws rather. Uh, do eight of those screws and we'll have those all set up. Okay, so I've got my engine covers on both sides. Now we're going to look at uh, reinstalling this cover here. We've got a hose here that's going to go in, I believe, uh, we've got a hose that's going to hook to the outside and go in. We have, uh, let's see. We've got this all back in So this is going to go here. We've got a hose that's going to hook up right there. And we've got this valve. So I kept the hose on it, this barb goes to this hose, hook it up, just slide that in, slide that in place, okay, and then I've got this hose, I'm going to slide that on and then pinch the clamp on to the nozzle, and that's quick and dirty install of your EGR system, now we're going to tighten up all these bolts. Uh, two screws here, and then two 10 mil bolts here, and we'll be all done. Okay, so I've got this all assembled. I had that hose wrong. There's a little uh, cutout here for this, and this kind of presses into place. So I've got uh, the two screws in here, and then the two 10 mils holding this all together. All the hose clamps are on right. I'm going to take our cover, make sure that hose doesn't get pinched, slide it on. We've got a screw on the top, a screw on the bottom, and it'll be all assembled. Okay, we're on the other side of the bike, ready to install the air filter. I've gone ahead and installed the uh, cover with these two Phillips number three screws. There's two hoses we need to pay attention to. This bottom one goes down the frame, and then this one goes over here to somewhere in the carburetor. Uh, so I'm gonna 
put this hose on this barb here. This hose on the lower barb, which you can't see. I'm gonna slide this hose clamp up. There's no hose clamp on the other one for whatever reason. I'm gonna line this up, this um, sort of hose up with the frame and press it into place. Push that on there. And we've got those two 5mm hex screws we need to tighten down here and right here. And then don't forget to clamp your hose clamp down to your frame, and that will be the air box installed. Alright, the final step is to go ahead and fasten the tank down, and then the two 10mm on each side of the seat, and we will have it all done. After that, I'm going to put my uh, spark plug wires back on the spark plugs, and we'll give it a start. Alright, so I've got everything tightened up. I've got my spark plugs installed. I'm going to give it some choke and start it and make sure it runs right. Let me get the camera close to the valve so you can hear how little noise there is. It was pretty loud before. And that's it. We're all done. Alright, that's how you do a valve adjustment on a XV250. Uh, might be a little rough. I'm going to have to do a lot of editing, but hopefully it's easy enough for you to follow. It's a simple enough procedure. Uh, just need to take your time and make sure you do it right. Uh, Make sure everything starts up right. It's running a bit rough. Uh, you may need to retune your carburetor after this since you're getting a bit more or less air into the cylinders. Um, I'm going to be getting an exhaust on this bike and replacing the factory unit. So if you want to see a how-to on that, uh, I'll be doing that soon.